Hey there. Uh, I got a question a couple weeks ago uh, about how to calculate the probabilities using the normal distribution of a stock being within a, a, given, a given price range. So I just wanted to do a quick video on that topic and show how you would actually implement some uh, that type of thing in NumPy. So uh, enough with the intro, let's just get into it. Okay, the only thing we're going to need for imports are, of course, NumPy. Um, I'm going to do some a little bit of plotting, so I'm going to pull in matplotlib here. And then from our stats package, both the normal and log normal uh, distribution functions. And we're going to do this in two ways. The first is basically do, using the log normal distribution for the distribution of stock prices. We've done this uh, in the past, so I'm not going to go into great detail, but we're just going to use the built-in uh, statistical functions. We're going to brute force it with this equation here, and then we're going to use the built-in st uh, statistics function, um, probably norm, to, because forcing this to be used in the long norm function is actually a bit of a pain. So we're going to use um, the built-in functions to do it, and then we're going to use the Black-Scholes model, and we should get the same number because Black-Scholes is based on this assumption here. So let me come up here and I'm going to insert a line below here. So in this equation here, S is the uh, price of the stock that we're interested in. So this is going to be our, our variable of interest. Uh, sigma is the volatility and I'm going to assume implied volatility. And I prefer that rather than any sort of historical volatility because it's a tradable number. It's a forward looking uh, volatility. So I think that's the best choice. Uh, and the only other variable here, uh, S0, is the initial price of the stock. So if we're interested in saying the pro uh, price of a stock closing between 100 and 120, S0 would be our initial price 100, assuming the stock started at that price. And uh, S would be that, that, that range of prices from, um, from 100 to one, what I say, 120. Uh, R is the risk-free rate here, and of course, uh, T down here is time. And um, why does this look funny? There needs to be a T. This term here needs to be multiplied by T to make the units work out correctly. So let me do that. Okay, so that's now correct, because T times, the, uh, times a rate has to be a price. So this has to be price, price price so rate times time is price and then of course the volatility squared times uh, time is also a, a, a price so let's just plot this out let's assume um, our s0 what did I say what well, was a hundred let's take the risk-free rate and this is the number we actually don't know volatility is a tradable number so we can get a good ballpark of that just by just from uh, option implied volatility but risk-free rate, or the actual drift rate here, the risk-free rate we know, but the drift rate we assume to be the risk-free rate, which is, you know, it's an assumption. So let's take uh, time to be one year, and sigma, sigma to be, I don't know, let's take it to be 25%. So um, does that look right? Good. I'm going to write a function now to... Um, to implement this equation here, and I'm going to do it in a cell above this one. So, insert. So here's our function. It just takes the arguments here: stock price, initial price, rate, volatility, and time, and it just returns this equation uh, right here. So let's just pl uh, run that cell and let's plot this out. Let's take our stock price from um, I don't know. Let's go from 80 np.lin space uh, let's go from 80 to 150 let's do a high density of points so a thousand and then plt.plot uh, s and then our function log norm s s0 r sig can't spell sigma today sigma and t and we'll just make this a solid black line. Of course, there's an issue. Lin space, lin space, lin space. I forgot. Lin space. PLT not defined. Did I not run my imports up here? Run that. 
run that. I guess I didn't run my imports. So this is what it looks like. Let's actually extend out the range. Let's go from 50 to 150. In fact, let's just go, uh, I don't know, 20 to 200. I just want to actually get a good representation of what this function looks like. So uh, here it kind of looks almost like a bell curve, but it kind of has this fat tail at this, this end here. And now the way to brute force the probabilities is to pick a range of prices. Say we believe uh, the stock will be between 100 and 120 and we want to figure out the probabilities. Well, from basic calculus, that's just the integral of this curve. It's the area under this curve between 100 and 120. So when I uh, upload this to GitHub, I'll, I'll make a nice pretty picture here with like the shaded area to show that, that area. But from basic calculus, um, we just do this, this integral. So uh, in NumPy, what you can do is we will set this to the prices we're interested in, say 100, uh, 120, and I'm not going to plot it anymore. This is the actual area we are interested in here, almost like a triangle because this isn't very super, uh, super steep curve here. So let us just comment out the plot here. Uh, NumPy's simple numerical integral uh, function is called trap z. So np dot trap z is trapezoidal uh, method to approximate integrals. We do our variable that we're interested in, um, our, our y variable. So that's this here, this log normal thing. Let me just copy and paste it. And this is the opposite of MATLAB. MATLAB does x comma y. Uh, NumPy, for whatever reason, does y comma x. So our x values here are our stock prices, and that's our probability. So in the next year, um, the probability that we will be between 100 and 120 is this number right here. So about 26%. So I was going to show a way to uh, kind of recast this in a way that you could use uh, the, the normal, um, uh, what's it called, the CDF, the, the cumulative distribution function uh, by recasting uh, this monstrosity here like this and getting an equation like this. But I forgot that there's this S down here. So when you do the integral, this is not just the um, cumulative dis distribution of the normal function because this S contributes to the integral too. So scratch this. Um, this part is is the probably the correct way to do it. When I upload this, or probably not initially, but eventually I will um, find a way to recast this to use the built-in function. Where is it? Up here, the log norm uh, PDF or uh, CDF. The issue is this kind of screws it up. This term uh, screws up the form that it goes into the the um, this equation in. So, uh, anyways, I'll worry about that later. And let's just do the same thing using the Black-Scholes model, and hopefully we get the same answer as here. So I copied this from a video we did on the option Greeks. It's just the equations for the Black-Scholes model: price of a call, price of a put. And we're going to be interested in these D values, D, uh, particularly D2. So the probability of a call expiring in the money uh, with a strike price of K is just given by the cumulative distribution function evaluated at D2. So I copied a function that we had written some time ago to calculate both D1 and D2. So we are going to just uh, use this and hopefully we will get the same answer, at least to numerical uh, rounding error as, um, as this. So um, let's calculate our D2 value for 120 first. This is going to be equal to our D function sigma. Our stock price is going to be 120. Um, our strike price is also 120. Actually, our stock price is 100. It's the starting stock price. Um, 120 is our strike price. Uh, R is our risk-free rate, and T, of course, is T. And uh, this returns a tuple in the second value variable, and that tuple is our D2 value. So I'm just going to do D1. Let me print it out <coughs> to make sure it's actually calculating it. D120. Yeah, cool. 
So let's do the same thing for um, D100. So I'm just going to copy this, paste this, our new strike price is 100, and that seems to run okay. So our probability should just be norm.cdf, uh, D100 minus norm.cdf of D120. So 25.839, and our other number, 25.839. Cool, we're, we're out to several, we're matching out to several decimal places. Cool, so pretty easy. Uh, when I upload this to GitHub, I will also write up some, um, uh, some text about the cumulative distribution function in case it's not obvious what I was doing there. But it's basically the same as the, the integrals we did with the trap Z function. And at some point in the future, I want to do this with the proper built-in functions uh, from the SciPy stats module using the log normal function that they, they provide for us. It's just a pain in the butt, as I described, with the algebra manipulating it to fit into the form that, that actually uh, you would plug into their function. So that's it for now, and until next time, see ya!